Good morning, everyone. Milton here, coming to you live from Apollo Park on a beautiful Saturday morning. Um, hoping that you all can hear me okay. Uh, if I could get somebody to give me a thumbs up, um, that would be great. I'm, I'm getting ready to walk across the, the other side of the camera and um, I won't be able to see any of the responses. So I'm hoping that uh, everybody can hear me okay. Uh, like I said, if you wouldn't mind, maybe uh, just giving me a thumbs up or a like. That way I could see that you guys are actually um, hearing me is the, is the main thing. Um, not so long ago, I, I did a video out here and um, there was some trouble I was having with the audio and it was coming out really, really choppy. And so I was close to uh, close to the mountains, or not, not close to the mountains, close to the trees. And I guess the, the wireless signal doesn't like the, the tree so much. Um, so um, uh, I'm going to continue on now and I'm going to get started. If you wouldn't mind giving me a, 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 you know, letting me know that you can hear me, please. Uh, just give me a, a thumbs up or something like that. That way I can continue on with, uh, with today's word. Great. Okay, so here we go. So walking across, like I said, I won't be able to see uh, any of your comments. I apologize because uh, right now I have the camera flipped the right way, uh, so I won't be able to see everything. And so uh, today, actually this whole week, uh, I don't know about you guys, but there's been such a resistance uh, in the spirit. Uh, and I could be just the only person experiencing it. Uh, or not, but there has been such a resistance, such a struggle, such a turmoil, such a um, an onslaught, for lack of a better word, an onslaught of the enemy's uh, attack against the body of Christ. And the thought here, and I don't have any particular uh, scripture in mind today. I have actually many scriptures that I just kind of been mulling around in my heart and in my mind and in my spirit. You know, there there's so many different ways this could go today, but I'm looking for the guidance and the leading of the spirit to give me what I need to share with you. Uh, because there are so many of you on here that I'm not seeing, but there are so many on here that are tired, are getting weary in the waiting, getting weary in the waiting. And so I may just, you know, break off into a lot of different scriptures, or I may just go into uh, personal stories from the past to try to, you know, just kind of follow the leading of the spirit and go with the flow, as they say. Uh, so please bear with me. Uh, I don't know how long this is going to be. <laughs> it could be very short and it could be very long. But uh, it's Saturday morning and I am thankful to be on Facebook with you guys here and being able to uh, uh, impart and partake with you here as we break virtual bread, the bread of life together. Because when we uh, start, when we start sharing one with another and we start receiving one with from another then we all grow and we all learn and we all come together you know it's uh i've i've often heard it said that there's two times that men build a bond and that's when they're fighting in the trenches against a common enemy or they have a similar experience that they both share. And so we are not alone in this walk of faith. We are not alone in this trial and this tribulation. The enemy would like to make you think that you are uh, isolated by yourself, that you're the only one that's experiencing what you're experiencing. Like I said, uh, starting off right here, I may be the only one feeling this, but there's been such a resistance, such a struggle, such a, an attack and an onslaught of thoughts uh, that have come to me. Uh, you know, and, uh, and, and that is the resistance that I've been feeling. Uh, I, I put up a post not so long ago where it says that if, you know, first you have to cast your cares upon Christ for he cares for you. You know, that's handing over your anxieties, handing over the source of your anxiety, the source of your fear, the source of the, your concern, the thing that keeps you up at night. Those things are the things that when you pray, you're supposed to cast and give to him. 
Likewise, at the same time, we're also supposed to cast down imaginations. But before we cast down the imaginations, we're supposed to capture the thoughts, those wild thoughts, those wild imaginations. You know, as people say, you know, um, you know, my, my thoughts and my imagination is running wild. And so it oftentimes it just takes a little small seed uh, and the devil comes and drops the seed of a thought. And then we're thinking that the devil is there tormenting our minds, but it's really just the flesh doing what it does best. Uh, if you can imagine, if I dropped the seed of a, of a plant here on this thing and I watered it, the earth by itself, the Bible talks about it, it says that the earth will yield that fruit, that will make it grow. You don't have to plant weeds. Weeds grow by themselves. And that's what the devil does. He comes, the, the scripture calls it tares. So it says, you know, this man had a field and he, and he, you know, has, you know, planted with wheat. And then an enemy comes and plants tares while men were asleep. So subconsciously, the enemy is talking and planting these seeds of doubt, these seeds of unbelief, these seeds of... Uh, thoughts of unworthlessness or of, of worthlessness, the thoughts that you are being rejected, that you are a disappointment to somebody, that you are not accepted in the beloved, that there's something wrong with you because of something that happened to you in your past. There are so many different thoughts that the enemy likes to plant in our minds, which leads me to, uh, to this other thought that, that I had. Um, and I would love to get some feedback from some of my minister friends, um, you know, on, on a DM or reaching out to me on a text or whatever. Uh, but please bear with me on this thought. I thought about this thought for a long time. Uh, the, the scripture that a lot of people know where, um, where Jesus talks to Peter and says, who do men say, or the, to the disciples and says, who do men say that I am? And then the disciples say, some say you're Elias, some say you're a prophet and all this other good stuff, right? And then, so, so he turns around and he says, but who do you say that I am? And then, so Peter says, Thou art the Son. You, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Right? And then maybe two sentences later or two verses later, um, you know, Jesus starts explaining to them that he must be crucified and given over to the Romans and to be crucified and die for the sins of the world. And then the same Peter who heard, because uh, right after that, Jesus says, you know, blessed are you, Peter. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. So now Peter heard God's thoughts. And that's how he was. It was what, it, what we call revelation. He heard God's thoughts and he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. So then he says, Blessed are you, Peter. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. He's, like I said, he goes and, expl and explains that he's going to be crucified and betrayed. And then Peter turns around and he says, no, don't, we're not going to let that happen to you. You're basically our leader. We care about you. And we're not going to let this happen to you. You know, humanistically, uh, human, in the human terms, we all understand that. We don't want to see our loved ones suffer. We don't want to see our loved ones go through certain things. But sometimes they have to. So then Jesus turns around and he rebukes Peter. Well, literally the devil that was talking to Peter. And he says, get thee behind me, Satan. And this is, this is the part that I want to share with you. Uh, it says, For thou savorest the things that be of men. The word savorest there is the key word that I want to share today. Um, and that, that word literally means the mindset. So it, 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 it's pers like specifically talking now. My thought here for you is can the devil hear your thoughts? right? That is a very debatable thing. <laughs> some people say yes. Some people say no. Here's my thought uh, on, on the matter, uh, which is completely debatable with whoever wants to, wants to engage on that one, uh, respectfully, of course. Uh, so the word savorous means to have the mindset, thou savorous, the things that be of men and not the things that be of God. And so the word savorous there, in my mind, it's like if when we start engaging in worldly things, when we start engaging in the cares of this life, 
when we start being consumed with the concerns and a lot of these things are understandable you know you you got to got to go to work you got responsibilities at work you got to pay the bills you got to pay your mortgage you got to pay your car you got to pay all these different things so you have to work and things of that nature right and so there's an under, you know you want it's it's understandable but the thought is the devil i i personally believe that the devil has almost like an entrance when we start being consumed by the things of this world by the being concerned by the things of this life by the cares of this life is what the bible says so we're supposed to cast these cares our concerns not that we're irresponsible in any way shape or form because if we owe a debt we should pay it if we have certain responsibilities to do then we should do them I'm not saying, uh, it, you know, that I'm just going to throw my hands up in the air and say, well, you know what? Uh, God made manna fall from heaven. So I'm just going to wait for the miracle to fall on my lap and the million dollars is going to fall from heaven. You know, uh, I'm not saying that either, but I'm also not saying that uh, it's completely up to us to make it happen. You know, it's a partnership. My belief is that it's a partnership. God gives us the plan. God gives us the method. God gives us the ability, the desire, and the power to execute his plan. It's his plan, his way, and he takes care of everything. He didn't just let Moses create the tabernacle in the wilderness just however he wanted. He gave them specific instructions. I wanted so many cubits long, so many cubits wide, so many cubits tall. I I want it made of this specific material. So everything had to be exact. So God has a plan and God has a purpose. And so once again, like I said, and so my question now is, can the devil hear your thoughts? And I would say, yes, when we have the mindset of the world, when we are not in the spirit, when we pray, sometimes we're praying and oftentimes we may not be really engaged in the spirit. We may just kind of be going through the motions. Some of us are, you know, kind of praising, but also being distracted. You know, I, I, you know, I've experienced myself in times past and recently as well where you're where I'm, I'm praying but i also have all these different thoughts in my mind that i'm concerned about but i'm not saying these thoughts i'm not saying the things that i'm concerned about i'm actually just praying i'm oh thank you lord i worship you i magnify your name yes jesus you are holy and we can do this mechanically so in that instance right there is when i believe that the devil can inject or he can hear the thoughts that are in my head in a human level because he savors the things that be of men. The word savors, once again, means that, you know, he's tapping into that mindset. If my mindset is of the being concerned of the things of this world, then he has access to it. But the devil cannot hear you when you're praying in tongues. The devil cannot hear you when you're talking in the spirit. So that actually speaking in tongues, praying in the spirit, that actually allows the Bible talks about in Romans 8, 25 and 26, where the, the spirit makes intercession for us. And this is done with, with groanings that cannot be uttered. So when we're praying, the spirit is interceding for us and he's praying through us and praying for us. The Bible also talks about in the Hebrews that Jesus is our high priest and he is touched with the feelings of our infirmity and he ever lives to make intercession for us. So how many intercessors do we have? There's only one because there's only one God. And Jesus is that intercessor. He is that spirit for anybody who has not the spirit of Christ is none of his. So there's only one, one faith, one baptism, one spirit, one body, one name that saves. So going back to my thought here. So when we're praying in the spirit, that literally is what gives us, uh, it makes the battlefield, it makes the playing field even. Because right now the devil has an advantage over us when we are walking in the flesh, when we are concerned with the things of this life, when we're doing all these different things, going through the mechanics of life. He has access to us because we are concerned with, he savors the things that be of men. The things that concern men is what he is looking for. And he has access to that. My personal opinion, like I said, uh, but it does bear to, you know, to, to think about it. 
uh, you know, as, as, uh, and, and have a good uh, discussion about it. Uh, but like I said, thou savorest the things that be of men and not the things that be of God. So when we pray in the spirit, God communicates to our spirit. He downloads his thoughts, his ways, and what he wants done. We see, we can see the circumstances around us. And we can say, oh my God, the, the, the things around us are just so horrible right now. And we start echoing and repeating what we're seeing. Oh my God, it's so dark. The world is going to hell in a handbasket. Oh no, and my loved one is, is uh, you know, struggling with sin and all this other stuff. They backslid all this other stuff that's happening. And we start echoing and voicing out these things. But we can also speak what the spirit speaks because that's what the bride does according to revelation it says that the 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 that the spirit the the the, the spirit says come whosoever will let him come and the bride says come so the bride of christ always echoes what the spirit who is the bridegroom speaks and so we are supposed to echo and and say what the lord says we're supposed to give the same appraisal based on faith. And that is what uh, I believe Hebrews 1 calls, or Hebrews 11 calls the, the good report. By this report, by the good report, did the elders obtain a good report by their faith. So their proclamation of faith, their confession of faith is what gave them a good report. What's a good report? The good report is a declaration from heaven. Just imagine like what Jesus came out of the water and he was baptized and he says thou art my beloved son in whom i am well pleased that was a good report our good report is what we want to hear when jesus at the end where he says enter thou good and faithful servant into the joy of the lord that's the good report because thou hast been faithful in few things now i'm gonna make you ruler of much which that perfectly segues into my thought this other thought which is um who was Abraham before God called him? I'm going to move this thing down a little bit because I think the sun might uh, make the phone, uh, you know, turn off or whatever. So give me one second. Like I said, who was Abraham before God called him? That's a thought. My other thought here is who was Moses before God called him? So now we have Moses and we have Abraham. Who was Abraham before God called him? Who was Moses before God called him? And so now we're going to get down to David. And so the question is, who was David before God called him? And the scripture that I, uh, I want to share with you guys today that I, I, I came up uh, with yesterday or that I got a revelation on yesterday, I started doing some research on it. Uh, it, it always catches me right uh so abraham who was abraham before god called him abraham was lost he was a sinner he was not part of the covenant he was not the chosen he was not a hebrew okay first of all he was not a hebrew he was uh, abraham of the chaldees who was a heathen a gentile basically so that's who abraham was before god called him so god calls him and then he gives him a promise of going to the pro to a, to a promised land. He says, "Get out of your your father's house." And then, so along the way in his journey, he transitions over Jordan and he crosses over Jordan. And when he crosses over Jordan, that's where he becomes Hebrew, because God baptized him by water at that point. Circumcision, the covenant of circumcision, and then we have the water baptism, right? Uh, the crossing of Jordan. Who was Moses before God called him? Moses, although God's hand was upon him since he was a baby, you know, on the Nile River and getting thrown into the crocodiles, let's say, uh, God's hand was upon him. But God didn't call him until after he had killed the Egyptian. So Moses was a murderer. Moses was an Egyptian by, by, uh, by culture. So let's say he was also a heathen or Gentile. He grew up as a heathen and Gentile. And so that's what Moses was before God called him. God called him to be a great deliverer for the people of God that were enslaved for 130 years. So that's who he became afterwards. Then we have David. 
Who was David before God called him? The Bible talks about it very briefly about David, that, you know, he was the, the youngest of his family, the, the you know, the, just the, the runt of the litter, let's say. And so he was basically rejected and isolated and despised, considered, you know, most, most people don't expect much of the youngest of the family. You know, the baby of the family, they don't expect much from them. Hey, you know, if they, if they don't, uh, if they don't kill anybody, they're doing good sort of thing, you know? And so, um, so then while there was that war, as you know, you know, they had sent, uh, they had sent, um, his father, Jesse had sent, um, David out to tend to the sheep. And so that's where we're going to pick it up. So he's out there tending sheep and he's out there battling lions, battling bears and killing these bears and lions because he has a charge from his father that none of these lambs that you are in charge of, let's say I'm going to give you a hundred lambs, a hundred sheep, go out there and go tend to them, go shepherd them, go pastor these hundred sheep. They're under your charge, David. So he's out there. And so because of that, he risks his life to keep the commitment and the charge that his father gave him. Because now this, at this point, that's their livelihood. The sheep, if you have sheep, then you have milk, and now you have meat, if you need meat, and or you have a, a way to trade, which is basically, you know, money at that point, a bartering system. So you have wealth. So his dad puts him in charge of these things, and he says, go out there into the fields and tend to these sheep. And so he's there day in and day out, tending to these sheep when the enemy comes as a bear when the enemy comes as a lion to try to steal and try to eat and try to devour these sheep he goes and he fights these because he has a charge he is faithful to the charge that his father had given him and he also has a love for the sheep that's very important because when you connect that with samson Samson was the strongest man alive in his time. And he says that he ripped a lion in half with his bare hands. The only other person that I hear that is David, that he killed the lion with his bare hands. So, but Samson was muscular from what I understand and was tall and big and muscular. David was the runt of the litter, skinny, scrawny, you know, a ruddy face. And uh, so he does not have the same muscular power that Samson has. But when the spirit of the Lord comes upon him, he not only dances, but he has supernatural strength to do the impossible, to go against a lion barehanded and kill and overpower a lion that was trying to eat one of the sheep, one of the lambs. So at that point, the revelation is that it's not based on physical ability, it's not based on experience, because he had no experience fighting lions and taming bears. This is out there and the sheep, just tending sheep out in the wilderness, and there is no... Uh, there was no precedent for what he was doing. But yet when the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, then he had supernatural power and abilities beyond himself. So, so then, you know, once gets the, gets the bear, boom, kills the bear with his bare hands. Later on, once again, lion comes, tries to eat one of the sheep, and he goes against the lion and he kills this lion. So he did all of this in private, out there in the field, without anybody else knowing. He had to fight these battles by himself, not under the limelight of any light, but just out there by himself, just doing what he was supposed to do because he had a charge from his father and he also cared about the sheep. That's going to be instrumental later when he goes against Goliath. Because your personal struggle right now, you have to overcome in private before you have a public victory. 
So the thing that you're struggling right now could be come it could come at you like a bear, a spirit of a bear, the spirit of a lion that has come upon you. The Bible says that the that the enemy or the devil roams about as a roaming lion, seeking him, seeking whom he may devour. So he comes as a lion. But we have the spirit of the Lord that can overpower. Because when the spirit, when the when the devil comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise a standard against that flood and will pierce that flood and make way, basically parting of the waters. So when the enemy comes in like a flood and starts to overpower, the spirit of the Lord, which is the wind and the breath of the Lord, comes and impales that flood and parts the water. And it raises a standard like a wall. Just like if you imagine uh, when Moses was holding up that rod and the, the winds of the Spirit came from the four corners of the earth and it made a wall and the people of Israel walked across on dry ground. That's